Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Eye Care Today. I'm your host Dr. Thomas Kisslin and uh, don't blink your eyes and don't shake your head. You're not watching It's Your Health um, and I'm not Phil Benio Sr. Um, you're watching Eye Care Today but my guest today is um, one of the co-hosts of It's Your Health, uh, Phil Benio Jr. and uh, thanks for coming on Phil and sharing some insights with us uh, with us today. It's a real pleasure. I think this is, uh, this is great. It's real important. Uh, we get to communicate like this, but it also today hopefully will show people how we uh, communicate uh, in the real world. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the thing, folks. What we're going to talk about today, and actually this is going to be a two-part two -part show, um, we're going to talk about things that Phil sees in the office that directly relate to the eyes. And we communicate back and forth about patients that we see and, and how they're doing. And, and I think it's important for you out there to really know why we do this and, and why should we care about these things. And we're going to talk about some specific diseases that not only affect the whole body, but, but specifically affect the eyes. And these are things that um, you know, we both see on a, on a real regular basis. And probably one of the biggest ones, Phil, is um, diabetes, right? Absolutely. Um, diabetes. Um, tell, tell the folks out there just really what, what is diabetes. Um, I know, you know we've got insulin versus uh, non-insulin dependent diabetes. Uh, so tell the folks what it is. Well, what diabetes is, is diabetes is basically a disease where your body can no longer regulate your, ins your blood sugar. When you eat things that have sugar or carbohydrates in, your uh, digestive tract will break apart these sugars and absorb them into your bloodstream, but the job is not over. Your bloodstream then has to transport that sugar into cells, such as muscle cells, fat cells, brain cells, so you can actually utilize that fuel. In order to do that, we need insulin. Insulin is produced by the pancreas, and insulin will actually grab these sugar molecules and transport them across into the cells. Diabetes is basically a disease where the insulin is now not working as well, or your body is resistant to that insulin, and therefore your blood sugars start to rise. And as a result of that rising blood sugar, there's a lot of different things that happen in your body. In fact, just about every body part is affected by diabetes, you know, from your head to your toes. And, and it's probably one of the only um, diseases, and I've heard you say this before, it, it's probably in some cases worse than, than cancer. Absolutely. You know, cancer will affect your lung and spread to your brain. Breast cancer will affect your breast and spread to your liver and your brain. Um, diabetes affects your heart, your kidneys, your eyes, your, um, uh, Feet, your everything, everything, your nerves. You know, it, it affects every part of your body. And um, a lot of those things, once they start affecting those parts, those things are very irreversible. And so it's very much about preventing those diseases from happening or, or from spreading and, and getting on top of diabetic care right away. So when, when a patient's diagnosed with, with diabetes, I mean, let's, let's go through this first. Let's say a patient comes in my office and, and I'll see this a lot. They'll say, you know, I'm just not seeing as well as I used to. It kind of happened overnight. And I'll say, well, you know, what's been going on? I've been going to the bathroom a lot lately, losing weight. And they say yes, and I send them to you. Um, what diagnose, how do you diagnose a patient with diabetes? Well, it, it, it's, that's a real classic presentation. We see that a lot, actually, um, especially people who aren't, usually come into the office. These are right. people that don't come in for checkups. Young, 40-year-olds, you know. have never been to the doctor, really healthy, and all of a sudden yeah. they come in because they're, they're not seeing well. Right, and, and rightly so. What ends up happening, we just check their blood sugar. And, and the, the basic you know, rules for a diagnosis is a fasting blood sugar greater than 126, a random blood sugar greater than 200, you're automatically a diabetic. And the best, quickest way to diagnose it is we just check, a, we'll do a uh, a glucometer check. We'll check their blood sugar right in the office and depending where that is it gives us an idea. Are they a diabetic? Are they not a diabetic? Are they maybe a diabetic? And then we can do some fancier tests such as glucose tolerance tests. We can check what's called a hemoglobin A1C which is a test that gives us the three-month average of your blood sugar. Looking at all those things we can then you know decide A are you a diabetic? Are you not a diabetic? Or are you what are called I call pre-diabetic um, but we don't use those words anymore. Um, uh, we use impaired fasting glucose tolerance. Uh, once we have that diagnosis established, then it's time to you know, talk turkey and get into to treating it because we've got to get those sugars down. How do you decide if someone's uh, non-insulin dependent versus insulin dependent? Well, initially we try to keep everybody off of insulin when they're early diagnosed. However, when your blood sugars are averaging over 300, there's actually a toxic effect at your body's own way of regulating your blood sugar. When your sugars are that high, you cannot produce insulin properly, even if you have the capability. For those people, we actually have to start them on insulin right away. We may get them off their insulin. You know, we'll put them in the hospital or at home. We'll get them on insulin right away, get their sugars down, averaging less than 150. And then from there, 
will transition them over to oral medications or sometimes have to keep them on insulin. A lot of people now with a lot of the new medications we have, we don't need to use insulin near as often or in early as we used to. But depending on the other medical problems you have, sometimes we do use it sooner. And you know, when we kind of look to the eyes a little bit with this, that patient that I sent to you because they were having vision changes, as you bring their sugar down, what I tell those patients is your vision's actually gonna change again. Um, because when those sugar levels, because you probably see patients whose sugars are in the four or five hundreds initially, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, when their visions, or their, when their sugar's that high, their vision's really off. As you bring their sugar levels down, now the patient's starting to see a little bit better, their vision kind of reverts a little bit and then we have to check them again. And I usually tell patients, I won't prescribe any glasses or even go with any prescription for glasses until at least 90 days, until you're comfortable that their sugar levels um, have, have come down. So it's, again, it's kind of working, working together. Absolutely, and that's something we do see from time to time. Someone will go get their eyes checked um, uh, and, at who knows where, and they uh, end up having, a, they get their eye exam done, they get these glasses that don't work, and uh, a couple of uh, months later, we see them, their sugar's through the roof, and we correct their sugar, and now they need to get their eyes checked again because right. you know, that, they wasted money on those glasses. But that's absolutely, what, what you're doing is absolutely right. You, know, you have to wait until those sugars come down to really get a true idea. Now, what else happens you know, with, with the diabetic eye exam? What else, because it is important for me to make sure patients are seeing you for their diabetic eye exams. Yeah, well, when they, when they come in, you know, we, we check their, their history, we, um, you know, go over their medications, now maybe that they're on, um, we'll see how their symptoms are doing, and then we, we check their vision, obviously, see if they do need glasses, and then we um, do a glaucoma test, we check the pressure in the eye, because there's actually a higher incidence of glaucoma in diabetics. Um, there's a higher incidence of dry eye disease in patients with, di um, with uh, diabetes, and then we obviously check the retina. And uh, in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the newer technology now that we use to um, to check for diabetes in the eye, but the old way was we used to do the drops, you know, dilate the pupils, you left the office, you were blurry for a uh, day and a half, uh, light sensitive, uh, but there's some new technology now, now that we can use. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that in the, in the next segment. Um, so folks, you're watching uh, Eye Care Today. We're going to take a, a real quick break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about the eye exam and diabetes, um, how to control your diabetes a little bit with your diet, and some new medications that are out there and some new treatments. Again, my uh, um, co-host today is uh, Phil Benio from It's Your Health, and you're watching Eye Care Today. We'll see you uh, in a couple seconds. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. You're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kislin, and I'm joined today by, by Phil Benio, one of the uh, uh, co-hosts of uh, It's Your Health, uh, seen right on your local channel 13. And remember, anybody, if there's ever any questions, please feel free to contact our office. Um, our office uh, location in Hazleton is uh, on the airport beltway. Our phone number is 570-453-2020. And in our Strasburg office, for those of you watching in the Poconos, our office number there is 570-421-3342. And we're on uh, 9th Street in, in Strasburg. And as always, check us out on the web at www.drkistlin.com. So again, uh, Phil, thanks for, thanks for joining me today and, and passing all this great information on to the folks out there. I think that's awesome. You have a website. You know, we, we need to get one of those. We don't have that at It's Your Health. Website, Facebook. Oh, oh my goodness. Gotta, gotta do all that. Oh, wow. Great that's, stuff. That's important. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning stuff today. Technology. They're really doing things different up here on the hill. <laughs> that's right. Down in the valley, you guys a little behind in time? Yeah, well, you know, just poor farmers. And that's yeah. all. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to get to work on that. But what, what you do have a lot of great knowledge of is this diabetes stuff. And we were talking in the last segment about how ravaging diabetes is to, to our patients. And, you know, we talked about when they come in for their eye exams, sometimes, you know, their vision's all off. I send them to you, you check their sugar, their sugars are a mess. You guys start to get them under control. Um, at, at what point then do you, you know, you see the patients initially, um, do you start to institute some diet changes, lifestyle changes? What kind of goes on there? Well, based on their, their, their blood work results, you know, sometimes we can get away with just, if we catch the disease state extremely early, we're able to actually call someone that you're, quote, pre-diabetic, you're not full-blown diabetes yet, we can make changes in your diet, and you know, a lot of that's about cutting down on your carbs and also increasing your exercise, trying to eat more meals throughout the day. Um, it's meals that are high in carbs and high in sugar that um, will help spike your blood sugar that are going to end up spiking your insulin, which increases insulin resistance. 
Um, but you know, a lot of people are really shocked when they come out of our office with what our recommendations are. And, and again, it's about the whole body disease. You know, when someone walks out of our office and I start medication for their diabetes, only one of the medications I'm giving them is for diabetes. The other three have nothing to do with their blood sugar. They need to go on a blood pressure pill. Okay, why is that? And it's not necessarily because they have high blood pressure, but it's blood pressure pills certain kinds, such as ACE inhibitors or what are called angiotensin II receptor blockers, they actually help decrease the risk of the kidney damage that's created by diabetes. And this was actually found out by accident years and years ago. They need to go on a cholesterol medication. Regardless of whether or not they have high or low cholesterol, statins and cholesterol medications actually decrease the risk of stroke and heart attack independent of what their cholesterol is, just based on the medication. And they also need to be on aspirin. Because diabetics do not die from diabetes. We don't write that on death certificates. We write stroke, we write heart attack, and that's the first and second thing they die from. So it's important to minimize the risk of stroke and heart attack, and aspirin is one of the best things to do that. And then you send them back, get their eyes checked again. Absolutely. And that's that's kind of where, you know, where we start to take over and really dive into to the eyes, because you know, the eyes are probably one of the only places we can see living blood vessels without cutting the body open. Absolutely, you can do, I can, Based on what you see, you can tell me a lot more about their overall disease state than I could ever tell just with the tests I have. And it's because of how you can see into that window. You know, we patient comes in, you know, I tell patients, make sure you bring, you know, your medication list because the last time they were in, or if this is their first visit, you know, we want to know that they're on the ACE inhibitors. We want to know that they're on the statins. We want to know, you know, what, what, they're, what they're doing. So we ask patients to bring their medication list. We go over that. We check their vision. We check them, you know, do they need glasses, don't they? Um, we check, do a glaucoma test, because like I said in the other segment, um, glaucoma is a higher incidence in patients with diabetes. Dry eye disease is a higher incidence uh, in patients with diabetes. And then we, we look at the retina, and, and there's a couple different ways we can do that. Kind of the old school is, you know, we put the drops in, dilate the pupils, you know, you're blurry for a couple hours, real light sensitive, you know, we look at the retina that way. And there's a new way uh, where we actually can do a, a digital image of the retina, it's called an optomap, and it's a picture that can take a non-dilated uh, image of the retina, and we can see the whole image, uh, the front, of, the back of the eye, all the blood vessels without having to dilate the eyes. And I can actually show the patient on the screen, you know, here's your blood vessels, there's a little spot of bleeding. And um, in the eye world, when we start to see bleeding in the retina, in what we call four quadrants. So if we divide the retina into four pieces of pie and we see bleeding in all those four quadrants, they're actually at a very high risk for progression of their diabetes. And that's when a letter goes to you and says, hey, you know, this patient really is having some progression here, they're at high risk. And then you guys kind of take over and, you know, really read the patient, maybe the riot act and, and do some other things to get their, to get their sugar down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that the, the new machine you have to do retinal exams are, is awesome because years ago, the last time I had a retina exam prior to coming here, it was a shiny mirror in my eye for seemingly hours <laughs> that I can't imagine a lot gets seen, but then you, you, I come in here, you took a picture of my eye, and we could look at it for 10 minutes and right. see every little thing. It has to just be so much more accurate, you know, it, it seems like a great test. You know, we have some other technology too, it's called an OCT, it stands for Ocular uh, Coherence Tomography, and what I tell patients, almost like a CT scan of your retina. Um, sometimes patients come in and they have cataracts and they have macular degeneration and diabetes, and if their vision's not exactly right, we're not really sure what's causing that decreased vision. Is it the diabetes? Is it, is it bleeding from that? Is it macular degeneration or is it cataracts? So we have this new machine that takes these sections of the retina and we can look at these underlying tissues and see is there some fluid there? And if there is, we know it's from the diabetes and that's where we can then get into the treatments. You know, we have them see a retina specialist. You know, there's laser treatments. There's actually now even injections that we can do into the eye to help soak up some of that fluid. So the technology is really amazing about, about what we can do now for the, for the eyes. Yeah, that's really, that's really wild. And it's so important because you know, the eyes um, are one of the things, or, or the, the pinnacle, from a diabetic standpoint, it's the, the most important thing for our independence. You know, when your eyesight starts to go, you can't drive, you can't walk, you have falls, you start walking into things, and those are all the things that will, low, you know, ruin your independence as a person. That's what puts people in nursing homes and personal care homes and, you know, puts them in the hospital over something like I can't see. And are you 
mandated by insurance companies. How does it work? That you, do the patients have to get their eyes checked? How does that work now? Absolutely. Uh, a, it's recommended they get their eyes examined at least once a year. Okay, and then based on whatever you find those recommendations change. So if you find that they have glaucoma, the recommendations, they have to be seen a lot more often or whatever their condition is. Sometimes they have to get checked every six months, three months. Um, but it, absolutely, it's important to get a diabetic eye exam once a year. The insurance companies actually mandate us to do that and actually screen to see that, um, that we are indeed getting our patients to see. Because sometimes it's not enough that a patient walks in and says, oh yeah, I had my eyes checked last August. Well, I, I I usually take those patients for their word, but it turns out sometimes that's not the case. And so that's where it's really important that we are communicating back and forth. And that's what makes a lot of the electronic medical records nice because we're able to document that much better. Yeah, we, you know, a patient comes in, they have their eyes checked, and immediately I'll say, well, who's your, you know, your uh, primary person that you see for your care? And then, you know, they say Phil Bain, I'll say, okay, I'll get Phil a letter. We get a letter together, I'll send it down, and then you have documentation the patient was seen. And, you know, we communicate all the time, so if a patient is really there in trouble, uh, instead of a letter, you know, we'll call up and just say, hey, listen, I just saw this patient and, you know, um, seeing some more retinopathy, so I'm sending them back down to you so that, you know, you can kind of address some of these issues. So that communication between providers um, is extremely, extremely important. Absolutely important. Folks, uh, that's the end of our second segment, so we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about diabetes and uh, how to control it, uh, how to help with diet. Um, so we have a lot great more information. Uh, you're watching Eye Care Today and we'll be right back. Welcome back and you're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kislin, and we're coming to you from our Hazelton location on the Beltway in Hazelton. The phone number is 570-453-2020. And if you're watching up in the Poconos, our phone number there is 570-421-3342. We're on 9th Street uh, in Stroudsburg. If there's any other questions, feel free to contact our office, give us a call, pass the questions along. Uh, we love to hear from you. And uh, our website, www.drkislin.com. And in the last segment, uh, Phil Benio said that It's Your Health is going to be working on a website. So I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to that. It's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. But so we're going we're gonna, to, you know what, we're part of a much bigger group now. And so I think they'll have the resources and the technology to come up with this. Excellent. You know, we, we do need to update. You know, we're, well, I'd like to see you on you know, the web. I think, well, well I, I I, I, we can arrange that. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get back to diabetes. We talked, you know, there's so much information out there. We talked in the first segment about, you know, diagnosing it and, and the test that you use. We talked about the eye exams. So now the patient's diabetic. They're relatively under control. They're getting their eyes checked. What do we do now long term for those patients to make sure they, they are under good control. Um, you see them on a regular basis, talk to them about diet, nutrition. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, it's recommended we see diabetics every three months. And when we do that, we're checking a lot of different things. We're, we're checking out their heart, we're checking their blood pressure, we're making sure their blood work is up to date. You know, there's been some changes with the recommendations to how strict control we want. We use uh, what's called a hemoglobin A1C, and that's again that, that blood test that shows me what your three month blood sugar average has been. And that number we always used to want it less than seven, okay? And a lot of people are still in tune to that. And actually, last year they made some new recommendations and said we need to have stricter control because less than seven is not good enough. We need to now get less than 6.5. And to give you an example, non diabetic levels are you know, less than six. And so less than six, less than 5.5. So we want to really treat people to where it's almost hard to detect that they're a diabetic. And so um, it, it's, it's important to do that. And we have a lot of new medications to our disposal. You know, we have, um, you know, we obviously have uh, your metformins, your sulfonylureas. We try to use those later. Um, we have the um, uh, 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 insulin, obviously, and, and that's something that's been a big change. We used to always use split dose 70 30 insulin where you just take a shot once or twice a day, and now with the um, emergence of longer acting insulins, we're able to use the combination of long acting insulin and short acting insulin to mimic the way your body you know, works. And then your body spikes insulin when you eat and secretes insulin slowly throughout the day. And by mimicking that, we can really keep your sugars under good control. Um, is it important for patients, excuse me, is it important for patients? to know their levels because all patients come in, I'll say, what was your last A1C? And they just really don't know. Um, 
isn't that important for them to really know where they're at every three months they go and they should know it's 6.8 or 6.2? Absolutely. Right? It's, it's, it's the type of thing, it's, you know, a lot of people love to know their cholesterol number, but that may not, for a diabetic, that's not near as important. You know, that's what they like to post on the fridge. They really should know where their A1C is at. And then if they see their A1C is up, they should really work hard on a daily basis for the next three months to get that number down. And then when it's down, be proud of that fact. Because by keeping it down and keeping it less than 6.5, they're adding years to their life. And they're adding good years. You know, They're not adding years where they're going to be in a nursing home who can't see and have all these diabetic complications. You know, They're going to be adding good, healthy years to their life. And diet plays a part in that, right? Watching the carbs. You know, I, I think it's interesting. Um, you know, let me ask you this. When do you suggest nutritional counseling? Because I had a diabetic in the other day, and I said, well, how's your sugar? And she said, well, I'm having trouble. I think I'm eating good. Well, what do you do for a snack? Well, I have a couple crackers and carrots. Well, two very high glycemic right. snacks that she thought was good, but had no idea about the no nutrition component. Yeah, there's, there, that's a big problem. We'll, we'll review diet in the office, and if we see that there's a lot of misinformation or a lot of lack of understanding, it's really important to see a dietitian. That's something insurance usually does cover. That's the big misnomer. Everybody knows I shouldn't be eating candy bars and sugars and sweets, but what they don't realize is they shouldn't be eating potatoes and um, grapes. grapes and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, fruits. You know, it's natural sugar is still sugar. Right. And, and there's a big diabetic lore out there, oh, natural sugar you can have, and that's not true. Well, unnatural sugars are a lot less healthy for you, and we can talk about that, but Natural sugar is, is going to spike your sugar. You know, eating an orange will be just as bad as having a candy bar, uh, sans the vitamin C. And so um, it's really important to understand that starch, you know, uh, any type of carbohydrate whatsoever is going to... I have a lot, ton of people, I have a you know, bowl of cereal before I go to bed as a diabetic. Yeah. My you head the, blows you up. You have the cereal, you have the milk. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so. Two big things that are going to raise your sugar. And so it's important is if you don't really know what you should be eating, ask, you know, and, and we can tell you, we can give you lists, we have tons of handouts, and we can have people see a dietitian. And it's funny, that same patient has that bowl of cereal, they come in the office and say, you know, I can't see in the morning when I wake up. Sugar's but as, as Exactly, and as the day goes on, their sugars come down a little bit, but that, that poor diet in the evening and not maybe knowing that nutrition part can affect their eyesight, eyesight also. Um, um, you, you were telling me there's some research about some new diets that are out. There's something called the Mediterranean diet that's out. Tell, tell us about that. Because even some of those things in that diet are good for the eyes. A lot of the, so tell us about that yeah, Mediterranean um, diet. The Mediterranean diet is, it's a diet that's been established since I think the 50s. And um, it was established by a physician who was working, I believe, in Italy. Um, and they found that people who ate Mediterranean style diet were healthier. And these were diets that had a high consumption of fish. Okay, fish, <laughs> you know, um, had a, um, high consumption of good vegetables, legumes, you know, green beans that had some peanuts and nuts in it, um, real low consumption of pork products, red meats, okay, uh, and um, a low consumption of, you know, sh carbohydrates, you know, and so it, that style of diet really is kind of basically a high protein, low carbohydrate diet, um, but it's good protein, healthy protein, not, um, not an Atkins style, I can eat bacon and, and cheeseburgers all day, you know, it's, um, it's been shown to you know, decrease um, your weight, uh, decrease insulin resistance, uh, lower your sugars. It's a wonderful way of life, and there's not many disease states out there that wouldn't benefit from that style right. of diet. Lowers your cholesterol, low, helps, helps with everything. Um, how important is sleep in diabetes? It's interesting. They just had a study published last year that showed um, disruptions in circadian rhythm, so shift uh, workers, people who uh, fly and travel a lot, Disruptions of your circadian rhythm can disrupt your hormone balance, which can lead to insulin resistance wow. and obesity. Uh, and so it's important that we're getting regular sleep and we're monitoring our, our sleep patterns. How about, um, now this is, uh, I think, a bad word, but high fructose corn syrup. That is a bad word. <laughs> high fructose corn syrup, what I is believe, it? is one of the biggest evils. Um, it is using corn to make sugar or make a sweetener, okay? Uh, it's not actually using a sugar cane tree or naturally derived sugars. High fructose corn syrup, your body has a hard time handling. It doesn't handle it the way it handles sugar and glucose and sucrose, which is what you see in your you know, sugar packets. Um, what your body does is it, it digests this very differently and it uses a different enzyme to do that. And when, when the fructose then enters your bloodstream, it causes a lot of metabolic bad things. You know, your liver ends up uh, uh, becoming re insulin resistant, which leads to diabetes. It increases visceral fat production, which is our belly fat, which is our evil fat. You know, that's bad fat. Um, 
uh, and it r increases obesity and uh, diabetes. And it's just, it's bad stuff. It's something we should try to avoid. I wish, um, I wish they would make it illegal. There's a very big, if you read about it, there's a very interesting story as to why we have high fructose corn syrup today. So give us some examples of some, f some foods that have high fructose corn syrup in it. Any soda that has regular, that is sweetened, has so high fructose corn syrup. So a non-diet soda. Non-diet sodas are all sweetened. Nobody uses sugar anymore. That's why Pepsi tastes different now than it did 10 years ago, because they use a different sweetener. Um, if you look at most things that have sugar in it as an ingredient, you actually will see the packet will read, instead of sugar or sucrose, it will contain high fructose corn syrup. And um, it's one of the most popular uh, uh, sweeteners now today. Wow. So when we talk about diabetes, we need to watch what we, what we eat. We need to exercise. need to see you four times a year. We need to see me at least once or twice a year, depending. We need to take our omega-3s. Uh, which we're going to talk about in our in our next show. Um, so there's a lot to do there as far as our, our diabetics go. Um, so any last words to sum it up? I think that diabetes is a disease state you have to respect. If you have an igno ignorance of diabetes, it will earn your respect in a few short years. Great words then with um, folks. Thanks for watching. Um, you know we did this show on diabetes, so you know feel free to archive it back and watch it again. Pass it on to your friends. I think there was a lot of great information. Um, again, thanks for watching. You've been watching I Care Today, and we'll see you next time.